House Remembrance Day by myself and Council Members Katz and Glass. Good morning. We are here today for a solemn obligation that we have in collective memory as a community to never forget, to declare as a county and as a community, never again, and to be with survivors and second and third generation family members of Holocaust survivors who in their daily lives today and every day are carrying out one of the greatest acts of defiance against one of the worst forms of human hatred we have ever witnessed. And so we come together as a community to acknowledge that if we had a minute of silence for each of the six million Jews who were murdered by the Nazis and their collaborators during the Holocaust, we would be standing here for more than 11 years. That is the depth and the weight of the burden that the survivors carry, that their children carry, that their grandchildren carry. And yet, each moment, each day, living their lives, that very act of survival, that very act of living is an act of defiance, is a light amid the darkness. With that, let me turn it to my colleague, Council Member Katz. Thank you very much, Council President. Following the atrocities the world witnessed on October 7th, uh, remembering the Holocaust has taken on an even new meaning. As we know, the Jewish community in Montgomery County has seen a dramatic increase in anti-Semitism, including in our public schools. There is no place for hatred. There is no place for Jewish hatred and no justification for anti-Semitism. Three generations, three generations after the Shoah, we must ensure that Jewish life flourishes in public spaces. As we mark the 81st anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, we remember the six million Jewish women, men and children, and all other victims murdered during the Holocaust. I want to thank the Anti-Hate Task Force cohort, especially the Jewish Anti-Hate Task Force, for their work especially in advocating for advanced education in their schools on the Holocaust, understanding the past and its impact on our present as our best path forward towards diminishing hate and bullying. The Jewish Community Relations Council of Greater Washington, JCRC, will hold its annual Holocaust commemoration on May 5th at 2 p.m. virtually. We must continue to work together to combat anti-Semitism in all forms and promote awareness and tolerance. Our duty is to make sure the memories of victims and lessons of the Holocaust are never forgotten or repeated. Never again is now. Thank you. When we talk about the Holocaust, we say never forget. And I will never forget the fact that my grandfather, Melvin Weissman, may his memory be a blessing, was a prisoner of war in Stalag 17. Shot down while he was fighting for his country and his people. And when he was in a Nazi prison camp, they tried to figure out whether Melvin Weissman was a Jew. They couldn't figure it out. And so after 19 months, he was liberated by the Russians. But in that camp and in countless 
camps around Europe, people of the Jewish faith wore yellow stars. I think about the hatred that exists today and the fact that if that hatred were to penetrate to the point that it once did decades ago, I would have a yellow star, I'd have a pink triangle. Some of us might have insignia of other colors, be it brown or red, as a way to detract, as a way to dehumanize. And now more than ever, we have to stand up to hate, wherever it is, whatever it looks like, whoever it is against. The world is full of too much hate, not only around the globe, but here at home. And so coming together today, coming together every day, is the only way to combat hate, to spread love, and to say never again. We are just months after the worst massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. So today's commemoration takes an additional meaning. We're honored to be here with Ed Godin, who will be speaking in a moment, uh, who's a accepting the proclamation today on behalf of his late mother, Nessie Godin. Uh, we also have Manny Mandel and Peter Gorig, who are here, two survivors. I also want to acknowledge many of the second generation and third generation uh, are here, uh, including Manny's daughter, our own Lisa Mandel Trupp, and, and grandson Zach Trupp. Uh, and uh, we have uh, Jacob Tenenbaum, uh, our clerk's father, who is here uh, as well, who was born in a displaced persons camp. Uh, with that, let me turn it uh, over to uh, one of our, our, our speakers today, who's going to be accepting this uh, officially, Ed Godin. My mom, Nessie Godin, attended all of these programs because she thought it was very important that she show the community that she cares. I wish she was here to be able to enjoy this wonderful program proclaiming the Day of Remembrance. Unfortunately, after a long battle with dementia, she passed away over a month ago. As many of you know, Nessie spent her entire adult life speaking and teaching the lessons of the Holocaust. She would say, teach the world to respect everyone that the Lord, by whatever name you call him, the Lord in heaven created. And when we see a wrong, we shouldn't look away. We should be there for each other. On behalf of my mom, and the six million Kadoshim, and all of the survivors that are here and have been here in the past, we want to thank the Montgomery County Council for this proclamation and the JCRC for continuing their efforts to ensure that the world never forgets. Thank you. Now I'm going to ask my colleagues, council members, uh, Katz and Glass, to join me in reading the proclamation. Whereas the Holocaust was the state-sponsored systematic persecution and annihilation of European Jews by Nazi Germany and its collaborators between 1933 and 1945, Jews were the primary target of the genocide. Six million were murdered. However, other ethnic and religious groups also were victimized and killed. And whereas pursuant to a 1980 act of Congress, the United Holocaust Memorial Council designates days of remembrance each year to recall and reflect on the horrific crimes committed during the Holocaust and to ensure that the memory and legacy of those who were murdered will never be forgotten and... Whereas we have a collective responsibility to those who perished as well as to those who survived, to educate current and future generations and rededicate ourselves to teaching the history of the Holocaust and explaining its continued impact on the world. And 
Whereas, as our ability to learn firsthand from survivors will soon be impossible, we must ensure that their stories are shared and documented and that we continue to educate young people so they can carry the history forward for future generations so that this unthinkable chapter of inhumanity is not doomed to repeat itself. And whereas those who survived the Holocaust are an inspiration to us all, and their, dis and their descendants are living proof that love and hope can triumph over hate and violence. And it takes every one of us to recognize anti-Semitism and condemn it in our community. And whereas on Sunday, May 5th, 2024, the Jewish Community Relations Council of Greater Washington will host a virtual community-wide Holocaust remember Remembrance Commemoration. Yam Hushoa, to honor the lives of the six million Jews killed and the survivors and liberators among us, and to call to mind their courage, forbearance, and strength. And whereas anti-Semitism has spanned for millennia, and unfortunately it persists today, with anti-Jewish hate and bias incidents alarmingly at an all-time high, and 74% of U.S. adults surveyed saying anti-Semitism is a very serious or somewhat serious problem and whereas the council unanimously passed a resolution on November 1st 2022 to address and combat anti-semitism pledging to support Jewish residents who make up 10 percent of the county's population and whereas Montgomery County is home to one of the largest Jewish diasporas in the United States and we must ensure that hate has no home here and all of our Jewish friends, families, and neighbors, we want them to feel safe to practice their religion wherever in the county they may be. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland, hereby recognizes Tuesday, April 16th, 2024, as Holocaust Remembrance Day, Yom HaShoah, in Montgomery County. And be it further resolved that all residents are urged to recommit themselves to not bear silent witness to injustice and to always remain vigilant to the principles of a just society, presented on the 16th day of April in the year 2024 by myself as council president, council members Katz and Glass and the entire Montgomery County Council.
Thank you, colleagues. Thank you to all of the survivors, second generation and third generation, for being here today and allowing us to recognize Yom HaShoah. We're now going to move on to a proclamation recognizing the 15th anniversary of the Gaithersburg Book Festival by Council Members Sales and Katz. And I see that Mayor Judd Ashman uh, is here. Welcome. everyone for the proclamation, all the Gaithersburg City Council members, got the mayor here, good morning, <laughs> all of the board members, um, we also have Brad Graham, Leona Blakey, come on up, come on up. So good morning, everyone. I am so excited to be here this morning to celebrate the 15th anniversary of the Gaithersburg Book Festival. Um, it's an honor to be joined by the following individuals, uh, Mayor Judd Ashman, members of the Gaithersburg Book Festival Steering Committee, Gaithersburg Cultural Arts Committee Chair, John Morgiello, uh, politics and prose owner, Brad Graham, and C-SPAN Book TV producers, Leona Blakey and John McArdle. Thank you all for joining us. Earlier this year, I attended a Gaithersburg Book Festival special event with Billy Collins, a former two-time U.S. Poet Laureate. It was an amazing experience and an evening of laughter, word play, and brilliance I will not soon forget. Over the last 15 years, the Gaithersburg Book Festival has uniquely celebrated the literary arts. This free event draws guests, authors, and poets worldwide to celebrate the power of the written word. As a former Gaithersburg City Council member, organizing this proclamation with my colleague and former council member Sydney Katz was of the utmost importance. Unfortunately, reading and writing are under scrutiny as state legislatures and institutions nationwide attempt to limit and control reading options in our schools and libraries. Given that Gaithersburg is the most diverse city in the United States and a significant number of black and Latino students are reading below the literacy rate benchmarks, we must support events like the Gaithersburg Book Festival. This year's Gaithersburg Book Festival will take place on May 18th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Bower Park and will feature more than 100 authors and illustrators from across the world. I look forward to attending and celebrating with guests from near and far, especially families and children, to join us at this fun event. Uh, before I turn it over to our special guests, I will give Councilmember Katz the mic to say a few words. She mentioned that I'm not a special guest. Did she just mention? Thank you, Council Member Sales. Uh, as the Council Member for the Third District, I truly am proud to recognize the 15th anniversary of the Gaithersburg Book Festival. As was casually mentioned, at this annual all-day celebration of books, writers and literary uh, excellence held in a place called Gaithersburg, Maryland, NPR's Maureen Corrigan described the festival in this way. It's like a little treasure, and I certainly agree. The festival started in 2010 and was conceived by then council member, now mayor of Gaithersburg, Judd Ashman, with the support of a then mayor, and I'm very proudly might I add, a guy by the name of Sidney Katz, who was on the, uh, on the uh, city and, uh, and the cultural arts and advisory committee along with the city council. The book festival has been praised as one of America's premier book festivals, and people come from near and far to attend this event celebrating the power of the written word to transform you, to take you away to faraway places. As was mentioned, we're gonna have over 100 award-winning and best-selling authors in all genres, as well as the interactive writing workshop, a children's village, book sales, author signings, and more. Please come on Saturday, May 18th. I don't know if Judd remembers the day, but on Saturday, May 18th, to celebrate the 15 years of the this festival. I was mentioning earlier that several years before Judd got involved in this, the city of Gaithersburg tried to do a book festival. 
But we had never met a guy like Judd Ashman, whose passion was the one that got us way over the line from where we needed to be. You start these festivals, and I think everyone realizes that when you start these festivals, there's things that work and things that don't work, and there's people that support you and people that say you shouldn't do this, yada, yada. Judd Ashman got us through all of that so that we can have one of the, and not the, best festivals that we have in Gaithersburg. So I sincerely congratulate not only the book festival, but a guy by the name of Judd Ashman. Thank you very much. going to turn it over to Gaithersburg Mayor Judd Ashman. Thank you very much, Lori Ann and Sydney, and to the entire uh, county council, all of whom have played some role in the book festival over the years, including Council Member Jawanda, who spoke at the book festival for when he had his uh, book released. I wanted to um, uh, recognize a couple of the members of our committee, Melissa King, who, by the way, is up uh, is a finalist for our School Librarian of the Year in the state of Maryland. And Nicole Yucatietti. And I want to recognize uh, my colleague from the City Council, uh, Lisa Henderson, and also uh, Jean Taft. I forgot Jean Taft. Jean, Ta Jean is one of the longest uh, serving members of our Book Festival Committee. I think when I came up with the idea for the Book Festival, the very first person that I pitched it to was. Sidney A. Katz, who was the mayor at the time. I'm not sure he had an idea of the scale I had in mind, but but that here we are. <laughs> he didn't, he says, he didn't. Um, from that point to this point, we are now the largest book and author event in the state of Maryland. We are the largest outdoor uh, book festival in the DMV. I, I um, couch that with outdoor because the National Book Festival is obviously larger. Um, and. I think the secret to the Gaithersburg Book Festival's success has been that this is a truly community-built uh, event. It, it's, it's driven and programmed by volunteers, and the logistics are dealt with um, and handled expertly by our city staff. We have amazing partners, including Politics and Pros uh, and C-SPAN, uh, Montgomery County Public Schools, Public Libraries, Montgomery College, you name it, uh, people in this community organizations in this community are part of our event. Um, and while I, I will also note that while it's called the Gaithersburg Book Festival, um, it belongs to everybody. It was built to be a regional festival, whether you are in Gaithersburg or Bethesda or Burtonsville or Poolsville or wherever in this county or in the region, this is your festival too, and there's room for you to be part, part of it, either planning it or uh, participating in it one way or another. And so we hope you'll be there um, on May 18th. Um, it is free to attend and free to park, and all the details are at GaithersburgBookFestival.org. We have over 130 authors coming this year, winners of all the major Pulitzer Prize, National Book Award, National Book Critics Circle, um, Newberry Honor, Newberry, um, Caldecott Honor, all of the different major awards and bestsellers. Uh, so check it out, and we hope that you will be with us. And, we thank the County Council so much for this recognition. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mayor Ashman. Now we're going to hear from Politics and Prose owner, Brad Graham. Uh, well, just listening to, to Judd uh, talk about the festival, I, 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 I think you can recognize the, the passion and the vision uh, that he's brought to the uh, to the event, it's what I um, had an inkling of when he first came to me, uh, not, not, not at the very beginning of the festival, but after it had existed for a year or two, he approached us and said, you know, would we be a part of it? Would we provide, provide the books? And um, I thought, well, you know, let's, let's give it a try. And so I've watched it grow uh, over the last uh, decade, decade and a half into what it is today. And I actually have a frame of comparison because we also, uh, support the National Book Festival uh, at the Convention Center every year. And really, uh, Gaithersburg now draws more authors to its festival than the National Book Festival and is every bit as well organized. And it's really a very exciting thing to have 
have been a, a part of. Um, but I will just second what what Sydney said earlier, which is this would not have happened if it would not not and it wouldn't be continuing as as it as it is if not for for Judd. So he's a re real treasure to this community, and I and I think the city of Gaithersburg and the county of Montgomery uh, deserve a lot of credit for supporting a festival like this because you know a community that reads that that um, uh, promotes uh, a, a, a book festival has heart has understanding and has wisdom and um, so we're very very uh, pleased to uh, to continue on with the Gaithers book, book festival Thank you, Politics and Prose, and Brad, for your remarks and continued support of the festival. Now we'll hear from C-SPAN Book TV producers, Leona Blakey and John McArdle. Um, even during the pandemic, this book festival continued, and so I want to commend and thank uh, C-SPAN for their innovation and the book festival committee as well for all of their hard work to ensure that we never missed a moment to bring this event to the community. So C-SPAN is celebrating its 45th anniversary this year. And C-SPAN realized pretty early on uh, that books, nonfiction books, are a great uh, place to find public policy and history and fits in with the mission of C-SPAN of bringing people where public policy is discussed. So Book TV has been around for 25 years. We just celebrated our 25th anniversary. We've been at the Gaithersburg Book Festival for 15 years since it started with during the pandemic. And uh, I looked it up on our website. We've actually covered 99 different events at the Gaithersburg Book Festival, all that you can see uh, at, at booktv.org. Um, last year, it was about four and a half or five hours of programming. Uh, if you add it all up, it's something like four days of programming of the Gaithersburg Book Festival you can watch. Uh, we've done a few more from Politics and Prose over the years. We always appreciate you having C-SPAN there as well. Uh, but it's a great event. It's a great book festival. Uh, we cover something about 15 to maybe 20 book festivals a year. Uh, but this is one we always uh, do go to since it started because they get so many great authors from the D.C. area uh, and a lot of these public policy events that our audience is really interested in. Um, one thing I will add uh, that, uh, so you can watch book TV on Sundays on C-SPAN 2 uh, every Sunday, 24 hours of nonfiction book programming. On C-SPAN 2 on Saturdays, it's American History TV, different events from American history over the years. And uh, last year, I would just note because of what just happened up here a few minutes ago, we went to the Holocaust uh, Museum and Memorial in DC and interviewed survivors. And one of the survivors we interviewed who was there last year was Peter Garag, who was just up here accepting the proclamation. So if you want to hear his story, uh, cspan.org is where you can go, and you can listen to his very passionate story uh, from the Holocaust Museum. So on this Holocaust Remembrance Day, um, it was very coincidental that he was here as well, and we were there last year. So anyway, we're excited to be back at the Book Festival. Thanks for having us. We'll be your fly on the wall so everybody around the country can watch what you guys do here and do such a great job doing here. So thank you. Thank you so much, John and Leona. Hopefully you'll join us. And now I'm going to read the proclamation with Council Member Katz. Whereas the Gaithersburg Book Festival celebrates the written word and its power to enrich the human experience, its mission is to foster an interest in reading, writing, and literary conversation, and... Whereas since its inception in 2010, the festival has quickly become one of the nation's top literary events, attracting hundreds of award-winning authors and best-selling poets and songwriters, from across the country to its beautiful park setting and whereas the event was conceived and introduced by Gaithersburg mayor then council member Judd Ashman with the support of the mayor and city council and cultural arts uh, advisory committee the festival is produced by a talented committee comprised of city staff and a dedicated group of volunteers who donate their time 
and talent and whereas the festival is celebrating its 15th anniversary of books writers and literary excellence by promoting its high school poetry contest writing workshops for adults teens and children and special events such as an evening with former two-time U.S. Poet Laureate Billy Collins and whereas the 2024 Gaithersburg Book Festival will be held on May 18 from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Boer Park and will be featured uh, more than 100 authors and illustrators from around the world funded in part by generous sponsors and supported by the city of Gaithersburg the festival offers programming for all ages, is free to attend, and is open to everyone. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland, hereby congratulates the Gaithersburg Book Festival on its 15th anniversary and encourages all residents to attend the 2024 festival to celebrate the importance of reading, writing, and literary conversation presented on this 16th day of April in the year 2024 by Council Member Sales, Council Member Katz, and Council President Friedson and the entire County Council. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to our uh, former Gaithersburg City current yes. council colleagues for recognizing that. Thank you to Mayor Judd Ashman for being here. I know there are some who have taken umbrage with the Gaithersburg being the greatest city in the world that the <laughs> mayor has uh, repeatedly said. Uh, we'll leave that up for continued discussion and debate uh, on this dais and uh, perhaps beyond. One thing that is clear. The Gaithersburg Book Festival is the greatest book festival in the world, and I'm glad we were able to, to recognize it uh, uh, here. So uh, with that, we are going to move on to general business. Madam Clerk, are there any announcements? Yes, Mr. President, thank you. Good morning, Mr. President, Vice President, and Council members. Today's agenda has been updated to reflect the deletion of agenda item number two, call of the final reading of Bill 4523, property tax credit, individuals 65 and above, retired service members and disabled military service members. Because of that deletion, Item 14, action on supplemental appropriation 2467 has been moved to the second item on the agenda and the capital improvements program work session on public safety technology projects, item number 15, and general government technology services, item number 16, that were originally scheduled in the afternoon have been moved to the morning capital improvements program work session. Thank you, Mr. President, and happy birthday, Dad.
Happy birthday to Jacob Tannenbaum, uh, who is here, uh, and uh, thank you to, to both of you for, for being here and sharing your, your most precious uh, gift uh, here with us and with the county residents. We're very much appreciative. The minutes from the March 19th council meeting have been circulated to colleagues for review. Are there any objections to approving these minutes? Seeing none, those minutes are now stand approved. Uh, this is now legislative day number 10. We have two bills for introduction today. The first is Bill 1024, Contracts and Procurement, Local Small Business Reserve Program, Veteran-Owned Business Preference Points. The lead sponsor is myself, uh, Council President, at the request of the County Executive. A public hearing will be scheduled at a later date. I will turn it over to Ms. Sacconi to uh, explain briefly what the bill does. Uh, good morning, Council President uh, Fritzen, and good morning to the whole council. Uh, yes, the sponsor of this bill is the council president at the request of the county executive, and Bill 1024 seeks to establish a preference point system in the county's procurement system in favor of local small businesses owned by veterans that meet certain criteria. According to the county executive, um, uh, there is a memo which is attached in the packet at Circle 6, and it explains the details, um, the gist of which is that for veteran-owned small local businesses, they will gain um, a, a, a preference of about 5% or 5% uh, through the procurement program. They have to be specifically certified by the... Um, uh, the veteran-owned small business, F, they must have a VOSB, veteran-owned small business certificate, as well as an SDVOSB certificate from the U.S. Small Business Administration of the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Thank you very much for that. Uh, seeing, uh, oh, uh, Council Member Fani Gonzalez, did you want to speak to this? Uh, yes. Question, can you call sponsor a bill if it comes from the gun executive? I don't see no. a reason why not. You can, yeah. you can right? Okay, I would like to co-sponsor. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Katz. Thank you, Ms. President. I'd like to co-sponsor as well. Okay, great. Councilmember Sales. Thank you, Mr. President. I, too, would like to sign on as a co-sponsor. Thank you. Okay. And with that, the bill is now introduced. We're going to move on to our second bill for introduction, Bill 1124, Finance Economic Development Fund. Make office vacancy extinct, move grant program established. The lead sponsor sponsors are Council Members Glass, Fani Gonzalez, Balcom, and Sales, the Economic Development Committee. I will turn it over to Council Member Glass. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, Last week, we learned that office vacancy rates in Montgomery County are at an all-time high uh, vacancy rate of 21.9%. That is a huge problem and a huge concern to many of us. We know that office buildings are the anchors in our community that support all the surrounding businesses, and we know that thriving businesses are good for, for all of us. It means people going outside to grab lunch at a local eatery, going out for dinner, doing daily tasks throughout the day. Uh, and it also facilitates a 15-minute living environment where people can go to work, go to school, and do their daily errands. What the, this legislation does, the MOVE Act, the Make Office Vacancy Extinct Act, is it codifies the it business incentive program under the Economic Development Fund so that more businesses can move into Montgomery County. It strengthens the program's eligibility so that businesses can receive the grant not only if they move to Montgomery County but move within Montgomery County and expand their business. Uh, and it also expands the maximum funding award from $80,000 to $150,000, which allows businesses to keep up with inflation and the changes in the market. I'm pleased to introduce this alongside members of the Economic Development Committee, Chairwoman Fani Gonzalez, Council Members Balcom and Sales, and it is uh, 
exactly the reason why we created the Economic Development Committee last year, to take the time to dive deep into economic development issues in our community and hone in on common sense solutions to help them. Uh, and so uh, not only do I thank my colleagues uh, on the committee, I also want to thank Council Vice President Stewart, Council Members Ludke and Mink. I believe Council Member Albernaz uh, is also co-sponsoring. You might need to make the motion at the table. Um, uh, and Ms. Sacconi as well. And from my staff, want to uh, give a shout out to uh, Joy Champalu and Valerie Carranza for their work on this. Uh, but I look forward to taking this up in committee and making sure we get more people back into the office. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Next is Councilmember Katz. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I would like to be added as a co-sponsor. Thank you. Councilmember Albernaz. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, I didn't get it in time for the packet, but I would like to be formally um, considered a co-sponsor. Great. Uh, and I also be added as co-sponsor. Okay, don't see anybody else uh, looking to speak here, so we are going to move on. That bill is now introduced. The next item on the agenda, moving on to our committee review, is item number 14. As the clerk noted earlier, this item was moved from the afternoon to the morning portion of the meeting. Uh, this is action on supplemental appropriation 2467 to the FY24 operating budget, Montgomery County Government, Department of General Services, Black Rock Center for the Arts. The amount of $260,000. We have a joint committee, GEO, uh, economic, or excuse me, uh, education and culture committee uh, 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 approval with amendments. I'm going to turn it over to Chair Stewart to share the recommendation. Great. Thank you. Um, yes, we had a joint government operations and education and culture uh, committee meeting on April 3rd to review the supplemental appropriation uh, for the Department of General Services and the Black Rock Arts Center. Uh, the county executive is requesting the supplemental to ensure the continued operation of the Black Rock Center for the Arts. It is a county-owned facility, which is a focal point of community space and leading venue for the performing and visual arts in Upper Montgomery County. County. The funds are needed to support indirect costs associated with community use, the artistic program, educational programs, and equipment and supplies. The joint committee had an in-depth conversation. Um, I think every committee member um, spoke to the importance of um, the center, of the work that's done there to bring the community together, uh, particularly uh, in the up county. Um, and I know Council Member Balcom has also been uh, working on this um, as well. Uh, BlackRock has initiated a strategic planning process to develop a path to sustainability. Um, a grant at this time to BlackRock will provide the organization with the time to develop sustainable funding pipelines, identify operating efficiencies, and strategic planning work. Um, after the discussion, uh, the joint committee voted five to zero. Council Member Albanaz um, was absent that day to approve with an amendment um, the appropriation. Uh, we did request an amendment to the uh, 2018 lease between the county and the Germantown Cultural Arts Center to add a council appointed representative on Black Rock's Board of Trustees. The relevant language uh, providing for this direction has been added to the resolution um, approving the supplemental appropriation. Um, and I don't know if uh, my co chair, Council Member Joando, has anything to add on that. Sure. Uh, let's turn it to your co chair, Council Member Joando. Thank you. Uh, co-chair and vice president um, Stewart and good to see you Ms. Hecklinger I appreciate you and your team uh, you, you summed it up well I'll just add that uh, not only do we talk about how vital BlackRock is to our community just how many different things it has and does do uh, it's obviously an arts uh, center um, but it's also a community center it's a civic space uh, it's it's a green space for people uh, to, to gather um, and we need to make sure that continues and so while this is a step to make sure that you and your staff can keep the lights on and keep going we also are very excited that you're in the process of taking this uh, uh, strategic refresh and doing your strategic planning and we want to be hand in hand and now that we have Councilmember Balcom who's always been involved but officially on the board uh, we, you know we're really excited about that so I uh, appreciate the the readout and uh, it was unanimous uh, and I'm sure if Councilmember Albernaz there it would have been unanimous 6-0 so 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, let me turn it to Councilmember Glass. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate the work of the, the Joint Committee uh, and uh, also the leadership of, of the District Council Member, um, Councilmember Balcom, who uh, knows this facility inside and out um, and has been an incredible advocate for it for decades. Uh, and when this uh, request for funding first came over, um, I talked with Councilmember Balcom to, to share my thoughts that this was somewhat unprecedented, and it needs to be said that we get lots of requests for from organizations to provide support, um, and it is important to note that what is different here is this is a ca county-owned building. Extremely important to, to make that note. Um, and I think what's also important um, is the input and guidance from the Arts and Humanities Council, and uh, I want to express my appreciation uh, to them and to their CEO, Susan Jenkins, um, for helping provide a roadmap to make sure that this investment in BlackRock uh, turns into future success. And as someone who used to run uh, an organization that received grants from the Arts and Humanities Council, I know that working relationship, and I know that BlackRock, its staff, and its board um, are going to be uh, active participants um, and will make sure that uh, these funds um, turn into, uh, really turn into investments for the community, for the county, and most notably for the residents of Germantown. So I'll support this and appreciate the, the collaborative nature. Thank you. Let me turn it to the district council member and future board member representing the <laughs> county council, Councilmember Balcom. Let me say it will be the third time on the board of Black Rock and third time's a charm. So um, I, I just wanted to, to thank the Joint uh, GO Committee and Education and Culture Committee, not only for your support of this uh, supplemental request, but for the time that each of you took to really fully understand the request and to fully understand not only the needs of Black Rock, but uh, the, the, the importance not only to the Germantown community, but the entire Up County and, and Montgomery County. So I appreciate uh, the time and effort that, that you took. Thank you. Thank you. And now the former Recreation Department, so I, who I think used to be responsible for the lease of this facility, Council Member Albernaz. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Council President. And thank you to the members of the committee. Again, apologies for not having been able to be there in person, but no surprise, it was a great session, a robust conversation. and. Councilmember Juwanda is correct. I would have certainly voted for this in committee and look forward to voting for it now. Um, I actually first met Councilmember Balcom when we served on the board together oh, wow. uh, more than 20 <laughs> years ago. And so I am intimately familiar with the operation of this true treasure, uh, not just in Germantown, but of our entire community. And it's incumbent upon all of us to do what we can to make sure that we uh, continue to support these organizations so that they can be thriving. Um, I also very much appreciate um, the thoughtful approach that we are taking to this and concur with Council Member Glass's appreciation for Arts and uh, Humanities Council who does fantastic work. Um, in this instance, particularly because this is a county owned asset, um, it's a unique circumstance. And so um, it's appropriate for us to make the necessary investments because this is an asset that we want to keep vibrant um, as we do all of our other arts-based organizations. I also want to acknowledge and thank the executive branch and in particular the Department of General Services who has been providing support to this facility for over 25 years since its inception. Uh, we are true partners in this effort and so uh, I look forward to voting for this. Thank you. I'll just note, uh, this is not just an arts facility, though it, it's been described as an arts facility and is classified as an arts facility. This is, in many ways, the community hub and community center for Germantown, which uh, you know, represents uh, over 10 percent of the county's uh, population and, and certainly reaches far beyond that. It uh, hosts many of our most important community and cultural events, including the county's official Juneteenth celebration among several other uh, major events and so while this certainly is an arts 
organization and facility, it is certainly a lot more than that for the county and specifically for the up county community centered in Germantown. And I think in the conversation in the committee, in the joint committee, that was certainly part of the conversation uh, as well. Um, with that, we have a joint committee recommendation. I don't see any other colleagues wishing to speak. So all those in favor of approving the supplemental appropriation 2467, please raise your hand. That is unanimous. And so that is approved. <laughs> the next five agenda items are the council's continued review and works. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just want to say thank you. Gratitude and thanks come up short. Um, I'm usually not so sweaty and nervous, but the stakes were high today for Germantown and Black Rock Center for the Arts. I'll see you at Greenfest and come see the color purple. It will move your soul. Here, here. Well, we look forward to it. Thank you and thank you to Black Rock for being such a great host to so many important events, including Greenfest. And uh, I mentioned uh, Juneteenth and so many others. Uh, with that, we're going to move on to our council's continued review and work sessions on the FY25 to 30 capital improvements program. We have three items on today's agenda uh, related to the CIP review. Uh, we're going to start with items three and four, which can be combined and we can take up as a block since they are related and from the same uh, uh, committee review. And so I'm going to turn it over to Chair Stewart and uh, ask her to share the Government Operations and Fiscal Policy Committee recommendation. Great. Madam Chair. Thank you. All right. Um, our, the GO Committee reviewed the County Executive's recommendations for county offices and other improvements, as well as other general government. Um, for the county offices and other improvements for FY25 to 35, the capital improvements program includes more than $171 million um, over a six year period. Uh, for the other go general government uh, CIP, that includes um, $8 million over the six year period. During our meeting, the committee reviewed specific projects, including the new county fleet electric vehicle charging stations project, scope and cost charge changes to the facility planning project, schedule and affordability adjustments for the American with Disabilities Act compliance, scope, schedule and affordability adjustments for the red brick courthouse structural repairs, and we received an update on amendments to the council office building renovations um, CIP. Um, and we also requested, and is in your packet, an update on our cafeteria and how's that going. So I thank Mr. Mia for all his work on that, shepherding that through. Um, I do want to take a moment uh, to highlight for colleagues um, in our conversations in government operations um, when we talk to uh, DGS, we are also reminded about the Infrastructure Maintenance Task Force report. The 2024 um, report identified a backlog valued over $321 million for DGS administered maintenance projects that include repair, renovation, rehabilitation, or uh, replacement of capital equipment. The largest backlogs are in our HVAC and electrical replacement um, and our planned life cycle assessment replacement and roof replacement uh, projects. Um, Due to financial constraints of our budget this year that we're all dealing with, council staff does not recommend any adjustments to the funding levels that we have um, before us, but I do just want to um, uh, make sure that people are aware of this report um, and that DGS anticipates um, deploying its new capital asset management system um, in the coming fiscal year, and we are having ongoing conversations um, at the Government Operations and Fiscal Policy Committee with DGS. Um, so we recommend moving forward uh, with the uh, CIP for county offices and other improvements and other general government, and it was unanimous. Thank you. We have a unanimous committee recommendation. I don't see any colleagues wishing to speak. So with that, all those in favor of the committee recommendation on items three and four, please indicate by raising your hand. That is unanimous. Those two items are now approved. Thank you to Thank you. Department of General <laughs> Services for being here. Your favorite questions are the ones that aren't asked, right? <laughs> We'll now uh, move on to item number five uh, is a CIP work session on the Revenue Authority. I see 
Keith Miller is here and making his way up to the table. I'm going to turn it over to Chair Fani Gonzalez to share the Economic Development Committee's recommendation. Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the committee, the Economic Development Committee met and we are unanimous supporting the county executive uh, recommendation. I just want to remind uh, members of the county council that the Revenue Authority is self-supporting and operates independently of the county government. So we're here to basically approve their CAP projects and they're all great to go. Um, if council staff would like to add anything, it was very self-explanatory, very simple. And I just, before you go in, I just want to remind, I'm sorry, I just want to say, Mr. Miller, you do such a great job with that revenue authority, and um, we're just very proud to have you as a partner in Montgomery County, and I just didn't want to forget to say that. So, go ahead. <laughs> Nothing to add. Thank you. You're welcome. Here, here. Thank you for that. Let me turn it over to Councilmember Luki. Thank you, Mr. President, and um, and I support all these projects. I'm very excited. Um, and but while you're here, I want to make it worth your trip, right? I was going to ask you a question. I'm going to give you the opportunity to please um, explain, because I know the the committee discussed this. But um, for the benefit of of all my colleagues and and for the community, um, could you just give a status update on the different property acquisitions um, around the air park and explain? why the FAA has recommended um, these actions. Sure, thank you. I knew I wasn't going to get as lucky as the, as the last group. <laughs> <laughs> you did, thank you. Um, so the, the, the property acquisitions, and, and just so, for, so everybody remembers, uh, there was an airport layout plan that was developed by the FAA back in the early 2000s that has been updated throughout the years. Uh, but we're basically still working off of that airport layout plan. What that layout plan identified is several properties that needed to be purchased. Um, in the last 20 years, we have purchased a total of six properties, with the Gold Gym property being the most recent. That was last year. Mm -hmm. All of those properties are in what's called the runway protection zone or features safety features uh, that the FAA requires. Um, so what's in this year's plan, you'll see, um, and, and just that the, the council is, is, is fully aware, everything that's in, the, um, in our CIP plan mm -hmm. is in conjunction with what is in the FAA's plan. Right. So when a project is determined and that it's going to be funded by the FAA, we put it into our CIP so that it's fully transparent and everybody is aware of what projects are being considered. In the packet that sits today, um, with the purchase of the uh, Gold's Gym property, there was that was part of a cluster of Gold's Gym and Merchant's Tire property. We have been working with the FAA to try not to purchase these properties. Uh, ideally, we don't want to unless we absolutely have to. Um, thankfully, the FAA has supported several studies in the past about seven, eight years that allowed us to look at this property several times and determine. The last study determined that the Gold's Gym property needed to be purchased, which we did last year. Mm -hmm. What's in the CIP plan right now is another study. We are trying to see if we can make one adjustment to that property so that we don't have to purchase the Merchant's Tire property. However, the Merchant's Tire property purchase is also in the CIP, right. um, and that is because the FAA is viewing it as this is required and they're going to want to show it on their plan. So therefore, what you have in your packet is both projects. Um, and again, the goal here is to see if we can um, satisfy the FAA requirements uh, in this last study and not purchase the Gold's Gym property. Uh, uh, the tire project. property, you mean? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, the merchant's tire <laughs> right. property on the corner there. Um, so that's what's in there. That is the background. Uh, I'm thankful for the FAA supporting these additional projects to continue to study to see if we can eliminate um, any safety um, requirements. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you, Councilmember Glass. Appreciate uh, the district council member for, for raising that and letting uh, all of us, uh, the, the other members of the council, know about the complexities that are that have been involved. It was discussed at the committee, but also just want to uh, also uh, thank the district council member because momentarily, uh, in the next half hour or so, we'll officially uh, uh, approve members for the Air Park Community Advisory Committee, uh, another venue for residents to work with us and work with the Revenue Authority 
uh, to, to mitigate any impacts that exist uh, that we have control over and that are not uh, forced upon us by the FAA. So thank you again, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Appreciate it. The Revenue Authority has been a great partner uh, and has been able to really leverage a lot of state support and federal support. This is a good example uh, of that and allowed us to move forward with a number of key priorities and uh, just really appreciate Mr. Miller, you and the Revenue Authority for your willingness to take on tough tasks and to move them forward. So thank you for all of your work and all of your leadership. Uh, with that, we have a committee recommendation. All those in favor of the committee recommendation, please raise your hand. And that is unanimous. We're going to move on to the next item, agenda item number 15. Again, this is an item that was originally scheduled to take place this afternoon, but has been moved uh, to this morning. Uh, this is a CIP work session on the public safety technology uh, projects. Uh, this was a joint committee of the Public Safety and the Government Operations and Fiscal Policy Committee. I'm going to turn it over to Vice President Stewart as Chair of the Government Operations and Fiscal Policy Committee to uh, share with us the joint committee's recommendations. Great, as everyone uh, comes down. Um, so yes, we had a joint committee meeting on April 8th to review this uh, CIP project and we recommended approval four to zero. Um, Council Member Mink was um, absent that day. I'm sure she can chime in if uh, she needs to today. The total project costs are uh, $365,000. Uh, we had originally um, postponed the review of this project um, because we wanted to have um, more conversations with the Department of Correction and Rehabilitation. We were seeking more information on the scope and interoperability with other county systems like the police department's proposed records management system. Um, after reviewing it and great work by our council staff. Um, the joint committee uh, recommended approval. Um, Ms. Henderson from TEBS advised that the county system has very rich functionality and can provide the types of disaggregated data that policymakers desire and that we have been requesting, but that the system has significant um, security flaws and had to be maintained as a standalone system to ensure data security. And so once these upgrades that we are looking at approving today can be made, we can integrate it with the other data systems. And I'm sure um, I will turn it over to folks if I got anything wrong um, in summarizing that or to my co-chair, uh, Council Member Katz. Uh, Chair thank, Katz. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Vice President. You got it all right, thank you. Sounds good. Anything to add from council staff? Nothing to add. Anything from the executive branch? Seeing none, uh, I have no other colleagues here wishing to speak. So we have a joint committee recommendation on this recommendation. Uh, with that, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. Uh, that is uh, unanimous. So we are going to uh, move on now to item. 16 originally moved, uh, originally scheduled for the afternoon, moved to this morning. This is a CIP work session on general government technology services. This was a joint committee uh, as well of the government operations, fiscal policy, and the public safety committee. So I will turn it back to Vice President Stewart as chair of the GEO committee. Great. Um, so we, the GEO committee, reviewed the TEB CIP, uh, which is more than $88 million um, for the FY25 to 35 CIP. Um, there are two new projects uh, in the CIP. These are key infrastructure projects that we discussed um, on the committee. The new projects include the county building network wiring project and the dense wave division multiplexing replacement project. The wiring project is a multi-year effort uh, to provide network wiring installation and maintenance services to all county buildings. And the dense wave division multiplexing replacement is a one-time project to replace aging communication um, technology. The CIP we reviewed also includes the Digital Equity uh, Montgomery 
Connects project, which will ensure that the county continues to help residents with lower incomes access high quality broadband services. Mm -hmm. The CIP will continue to invest also in the fiber net program, fund a new public safety server hardware program to replace end of life service for public safety systems, and fund the county radio life cycle replacement project, which will continue to provide for the phased replacement of outdated voice radio systems used primarily by the county's public safety agencies. Um, after our discussion of all these things, the committee unanimously um, agreed to move this forward to uh, the full council, um, and again, I know we have Director Rober here and um, um, uh, Dr. Costas, no, Teregas, I always do that, sorry, <laughs> um, here to discuss any of the items. Great, uh, Dr. Teregas. I just need to make a technical correction on your cover memo. Uh, it identifies the TEPS project as County Building Network Wiring and DWDM. Inadvertently, two other projects were omitted from this sentence, which are the ones that the chair uh, discussed uh, digital equity and fiber net. So apologies for that omission. Noted. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, with that, unless uh, the director or anybody else uh, wishes to add anything, I don't see any other colleagues wishing to speak on this item. All those in favor of the committee recommendation, please raise your hand. That is unanimous. So we are going to move on to item six, the consent calendar, uh, which includes, as uh, noted, the uh, Air Park Community Advisory Committee, which uh, Council Member Lukey uh, is uh, included on. Uh, we'll take up the consent calendar, and then I can turn uh, to a colleague who wishes to make a comment before we uh, adjourn uh, for the morning. All those, uh, is, is there a motion uh, to approve the consent calendar? Council Member Katz. Move, seconded by Council Member Lukey. All those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. That is unanimous. I'm gonna turn it to Council Member Lukey for a point of personal privilege. Thank you so much, Mr. President and colleagues. Um, I wanna to highlight the approval of all of the initial members of the new Air Park Community Advisory, Advisory Committee. Um, and I look forward to representing the council on that body and continuing to represent the, the community and finding ways to mitigate noise and address potential safety issues at this facility. Um, while it's technically new, I'm using air quotes because uh, it, there was a prior iteration of this before, um, but it's important to know that whether you're a member in the first term or not, if you, if you were selected for this body or not, um, the body is a public body and it's there to do the people's work. Um, these will be open meetings, um, just as any board, committee, and commission in the county is. And one of the main purposes for creating this body was to create this as a public forum to have these discussions. And I look forward to doing this work and to further collaboration with our community, both the community surrounding the air park and those using the air park itself. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate your service and representing the council there. We understand how important the air park is to the county, but also how impactful it is in the community and balancing those two dynamics is really important. Uh, with that, I don't see any other colleagues wishing to speak. So uh, colleagues, uh, we are uh, now uh, adjourned in recess and we'll reconvene this afternoon at 1.30.